Okay, second part um, is cardiac CT. At Methodist Hospital, um, we, we have three cardiac CT readers. We all also are nuclear uh, cardiologists, which is kind of like trends in the country that if you do nuclear cardiology right now, most of the people would also do CT, kind of fit into each other because cardiac CT, the main application right now is coronary CTA. So really quick overview. I'm not gonna give you data or so anything like that. Just wanna show you examples, pictures, um, to impress you, hopefully, and, and give you some idea about the potential of CT. So coronary indication. First part, I'm gonna talk about coronary CTA, which is the main indication for s cardiac CT at this stage. Uh, why, why, cardiac, why coronary CTA, right? I mean, you can just cap the patient. But uh, you, you're probably familiar with this data. This is already uh, several years old. Uh, data shown that the low diagnostic EO elective coronary angiogram, okay? You heard about it. Almost half or close half of the angiogram we do in this country basically is, has no significant disease. So, so the process of uh, choosing uh, the patient to go to the cath lab, we're not doing a good job. Uh, so essentially, um, the, the major strength of cardiac coronary CTA is the negative predictive value, meaning that if you have a negative or normal CTA, 98, 99% of the time in a reasonable quality images, you can exclude significant coronary disease. So basically, you can work very well as a gatekeeper to the cath lab, which can avoid a lot of non diagnostic cath. So just a real quick rundown of the indication. So any symptomatic patient with chest pain, syndrome ischemic, low to intermediate pretest likelihood. Okay, right now in UK, the first test to be ordered instead of a stress test is coronary CTA. Uh, just to give you an idea, this is a regular 64 slide CT done well. You can obtain exquisite images like this in 3D render. Uh, basically, uh, it's like this case of one of the patients we did uh, earlier with 64 slices, older generation CTA. Uh, this is a patient with atypical chest pain, very strong family history of MI. Uh, you can see he was lucky. Uh, he's not cursed. He has clean coronaries. Uh, so this is most powerful use of, uh, of this technology is to exclude presence of significant disease. For this unlucky patient, obviously he had chest pain, hypertension. You can see uh, distal left main stenosis uh, pointed by the arrow, uh, documented by the excellent correlation with the angiogram, or this is uh, an unusual patient who had atypical chest pain, normal stress test, has one single coronary, uh, which is rather unusual. I don't know if that's cause of the chest pain. But uh, right now in this country, I think the, the, it's rather difficult to get approval to get a CTA without any other test. That's just the way uh, the, the, the market or the environment. Uh, so essentially, most of the CTA is performing patient with borderline, equivocal, or non-diagnostic stress test, which you feel like, eh, a stress test, I'm not so confident. I don't think the patient have disease, or even if you have abnormal stress test, but the pretest likelihood is not very high, it seems rather than send the patient to the cath lab, you order a stress test. So this is insurance company, I would say 99% of the time would approve this indication. Uh, again, I apologize, not pr playing. This is a patient with uh, s s one or two segments abnormal uh, exercise echo. Uh, we went to the uh, CTA showing that she has some underlying atherosclerosis but no obstructive disease in LAD, that's where the, uh, the abnormality was seen. Or this 45 page, 46 year old female with uh, a reversible defect in the anterior wall, you can see because the, the clinical presentation was atypical and she really doesn't have that many risk factor. Uh, CTA show a perfect normal coronary and the non-contrast CT show a very large hiatal hernia, likely cause of her symptom. Uh, and the CTA is being uh, used frequently for uh, uh, triage of acute chest pain in the ED. Uh, again, this is just some quick example some patient, you know, uh, this patient with a very tight lesion in the LAD into the cath lab. Uh, and the important thing is, uh, not only you can look at the coronary tree, right? I mean, you heard about triple rule, right? You can look at PE 
although you require a different type of protocol, you know, obviously you can look at aortic aortic dissection and you can find out other causes of chest pain like pneumonia, pleural effusion, hydrohernia, et cetera, et cetera. And the other major indication for now for using coronary CTAs for congenital anomaly, like this case uh, that I saw when I was in Wisconsin, uh, uh, you can see uh, Alcapa, LAD coming out from the PA, okay? Uh, again, I'm sorry, it doesn't play. This is a patient with single coronary arteries, uh, very interesting, she's in her 60s, had a sudden death, and stress tests show mild ischemia in the anterior apical wall. If you look at the CTA, that's the area where the single coronary coming out from the right coronary cusp barely reach uh, the apex, so this area is definitely hypovascularized, uh, which that caused her uh, s sudden death, uh, I'm not so sure, but uh, again, I don't know what the treatment it is, but I guess you, at least you get the diagnosis. And the third major indication is for patient with new onset heart failure, low ejection fraction, in which they don't have history of coronary disease or myocardial infarction, EKG is unremarkable. Uh, I would say instead of going to the cath lab, CTA is an excellent modality to rule out a disease. Obviously, this is a patient uh, with very low pretest, like Louis, 37 years old female with chest pain and shoulder breath, uh, very dramatic ECG changes, as you can see. Uh, echo, uh, take my word, shows EF in the 20s, uh, whole anterior, whole two-thirds distal, the, uh, the LV is not moving. Right now, you know, most likely it's due to stress, uh, cardiomyopathy or Takasubo, uh, which was the case. Her coronary CTA is completely normal. Uh, again, this is a different patient, 59 years old. Patient came in with chest pain and positive troponin, had uh, echo. Uh, you can see this tall, uh, this apex is totally echinetic with a clot in there. Uh, and uh, you would think, well, probably a distal LED disease. Uh, but no, she did not have any coronary disease. This is a rare case of a stress cardiomyopathy. Uh, causing uh, apical aneurysm and, uh, and formation of the clot. Um, this is another case, a patient with low EF uh, and normal cath. Uh, so um, I'm gonna show you some of the new advances, the technology, what it leads, what's, uh, you know, what's new in coronary CTA, because you know, the concern mainly with the coronary CTA is the radiation and contrast, obviously, and uh, but the new, newer technology, newer scanner, like what we have at Methodist, uh, allows you now to do this kind of uh, study in the TAVAR uh, study. You can image from the neck all the way down to the thigh uh, in 1.4 seconds. So, I mean, there's no, no faster uh, technology than CT in obtaining anatomical information of the, of the body, of the cardiovascular structure. Uh, in this case, uh, this is one of the first case we deal with a new scanner. Um, very, very fast, 1.7. And uh, the other thing is the low dose, low dose radiation. This is a 58 years old. One of the first case we did had mildly abnormal borderline myocardial perfusion imaging. He's rather thin, unusual for Texas, obviously. Um, but, you know, we were able to control his heart rate very well, and we do low KV, low MA imaging. Uh, normal, non-obstructive disease, we got it down to 0 0.65 millisiever. Just to give you an idea, by living here in Houston, you get two to three, two and a half millisiever just from the environment. So this is equivalent at about three months of living in Houston, the radiation amount that you get from the sun. The other thing is low dose, uh, low dose contrast. Uh, you can see this is a case of a patient with LVAD, laboratory assist device, uh, with uh, renal insufficiency. With the newer scanner, newer protocol, we were able to do this multi-phase dynamic study, RB to assess LV and RB function in the cannula over 30 cc of contrast. Uh, so very beneficial, obviously, if you have patient with uh, renal insufficiency and you need cardiac CT, maybe not for coronary CT, because coronary CT with this low dose protocol, you might not get enough uh, contrast in the coronary, although it need to be proven, uh, but for structural heart assessment, uh, this protocol with low dose is a reality, meaning 
Uh, if I only want to look at the LV, I probably could get away with 20 cc of contracts. Uh, so uh, the other major development is uh, what we call CTFFR or virtual FFR. This is a technology uh, in a lot of research going on and hope I think it's been approved by FDA. Essentially, you can get uh, functional information from anatomical images using very sophisticated uh, computer algorithm. So um, I think will change a lot of how we do things if it really uh, clinically, uh, in the cl current clinical trial worked out uh, well. Okay, the last thing I wanna show you is some new advances of the CT is allow you to do uh, 3D, 4D imaging, essentially 3D images render 3D render images in, in resolving time, like this case with patient with, uh, I'm sorry, let me go back, patient with uh, mitral valve, in this case a patient with aortic dissection. Uh, and, uh, but the most exciting thing about cardiac CT is the non coronary application. I'm gonna just show you some examples of what CT could be done. Uh, you heard about this, uh, with the TAVAR uh, incidence of a uh, clot is, uh, has been shown to be, uh, to be in the, about 20, 30% of clinical significance unknown. This is a case of, uh, um, you're, gonna hear, you're gonna hear about your surgeon and interventional cardiology, one of 4D images. This is the, what they call 4D dynamic images. Uh, so basically, you can see this clot, present the clot in the, in the cusp of the cornea, in, uh, in the prosthetic valve. Uh, the other major indication of the coronary CT is assessment of prosthetic valve dysfunction, especially with paravalvular leak, uh, aortic position, uh, before they go ahead and do the, uh, the, the, the plug. Uh, ECT is very useful in assessing the location and the size of the, uh, let me see if I can. So, so this is the prosthetic valve rendered in 3D and this is the leak. Okay, so it's, uh, and this could be over, overlaid in the cath lab, uh, facilitate the, the uh, is, uh, uh, progressing uh, uh, advance of the catheter and the plug and the wire through the hall for you to, to deploy the plug. And uh, I think this is the most exciting application is to use the CT to understand how the prosthetic valve that we're putting in patients, how, how do they do uh, functioning. This is a patient undergoing transcatheter mitral valve replacement before the surgery, before the procedure, very large heart, dilated annulus, uh, significant, uh, significant uh, large annulus, and this is after the deployment of the valve. As you can see, uh, the most important thing, it allows you to assess how this valve prosthesis behaves throughout the cardiac cycle. Okay, this is extremely important for design of the prosthesis, okay? So anyway, uh, this is all I have to do, show you. Hope it'll get you something uh, to excite about, about what you can do uh, as a cardiology imager in terms of nuclear and CT.